Hey guys, my name is Nick. I'm a Microsoft Certified Expert Administrator. Create a lot of content for MSPs. And today I'm gonna to be showing you guys the introduction of Azure AD P1 coming into the Microsoft 365 business offering. So as far as the agenda goes for today, we're gonna to be doing a high level overview of the announcement, some of the differences between the legacy Azure AD features that were always available in M365 business compared to some of the new offerings that will be introduced today. We'll be going through what I consider to be the most valuable of the new offerings that are going to be introduced and walking through each one of those so you guys understand exactly what it does and how you can leverage it within your customer organizations. And then lastly, I'm going to show you how you can prepare to get ready for this and basically have a solution that you can present to your customer if you want to upsell them or integrate some of these solutions. So getting into it here. Just the basic announcement I wanted to show you. This is in the message center. We got this on March 6th. And it's basically telling us that we are introducing Azure AD P1 into the M365 business solution itself. And it's going to be introduced as early as April and completed rollout is expected in June across all tenants. So this was a really powerful announcement simply because we've gotten some of the, the legacy features of Azure AD P1 like conditional access and self-service password right down into our local AD if you're using Azure AD Connect, but this is not the full feature set of Azure AD P1. So I'd like to pull up this comparison sheet here because it does show M365 Business next to EMS plus E3, which does contain Azure AD P1. So while not all of these are gonna be part of P1, most of them are, and this is what I'm gonna be using as a basis here, and I can show you which ones aren't exactly concluded, and this is how we're gonna be going through and showing what I consider to be the most notable applications. So these are the notable additions that I wanted to cover in this video here. First and foremost, Cloud App Discovery is what I consider to be the most valuable piece that you're gonna be getting as part of this introduction. So when I look at Cloud App Discovery, it does uh, analyze our traffic logs against Microsoft's category of over 16,000 applications. And Microsoft goes ahead and they rank these apps and they're scored by more than 80 risk factors to provide ongoing visibility into cloud use within an organization, into shadow IT, and the risk associated with these applications themselves. So when you're in this portal here, you can see you've ingested this log data and it's giving you, you know, an output of the discovered apps. It's showing you how much data is in each. It's showing you the app categories, some of where the apps are located. And in addition to that, you can go into the discovered apps. And here, I'm not gonna go into how it's scored. It's just outside the scope of this video, but you can choose to sanction or unsanction these apps as well too across the organization. So this gives you the ability to go ahead and organize everything that may be going on within the organization itself. In addition to that, you have heightened visibility into things like OAuth applications. And these are applications that somebody registered for and they're using their Azure Active Directory credentials to authenticate into that application because it was available uh, from that app. And then the permission levels here, they show you more high risk because of certain security rules that are being used. So for fellow here, this may be somebody who's a global administrator who's using their credentials to log in. So there's a high, high likelihood that they could be compromised and compromise their credentials because of the app itself. And this may be something that you want to mark as banned as well too, so they can't actually access that app with their Azure Active Directory credentials. They could access it with other third party or personal credentials but you're not gonna allow it within your organization because you don't want those credentials to be compromised by something that's not even managing corporate data. The other cool part with Cloud App Discovery is that it does integrate with Microsoft Security and Compliance Center in the Threat Management Dashboard. So you can see this as a, as a basic widget uh, right here on the main dashboard page and you can get a high level scope of some of the applications that are being used for OAuth that you may want to investigate or block access to completely. Now Cloud App Discovery, just to clarify here, is part of the Cloud App Security solution from Microsoft. It does not include the full feature set here. So I'll link this below, but in a high level sense here, you're getting all the discovery features, but what comes with the full solution of Cloud App Security is much, much more. 
in the sense of anomaly detection, in the sense of threat detection and information protection. So there's a lot more security behind that. You can in incorporate it with conditional access to prevent access to certain risky applications or if they get detected with new vulnerabilities. Um, this may be something where you want to black access because it hasn't been patched recently and there's a vulnerability from a recent Microsoft update, right? So there's a lot more power in the full solution, but just getting it and just getting the discovery of the applications to me is extremely powerful to help prevent shadow IT, especially as we grow with many, many SaaS applications. We touched on how you can upload log data to get the information here for all the apps within the company. That is a single point of scan and you would want to ask the question of how you can do a continuous scan to always know what applications users are using um, within the, the organization themselves. So one thing that Microsoft recently introduced as well was the Microsoft Defender ATP solution standalone as part of the CSP offering. So this is something that they have for endpoint protection and you can actually push out this configuration package via your ARMM tool or a GPO like you traditionally would with any type of other uh, pieces of software and this can actually run on your device to perform both endpoint protection functionality such as threat hunting, uh, investigation, automated response. In addition, you can integrate it with Cloud App Security, so it's constantly monitoring what applications are on the network. So that's continuous logging of information that's coming through, and combining those two options is actually a really powerful solution. So the next one here is administrative units, and administrative units, in my opinion, were designed for large organizations or maybe co-managed solutions where you're working with the local internal IT of these small businesses to provide services. And with administrative unit, it's basically an Azure AD resource that can be a container for other Azure AD resources. It follows a model of least privilege because you're scoping out administrative tasks like password resets or uh, contact info updates, assigning licenses to a certain list of users, uh, all to this one administrative unit. So as an example, let's say we have a large business that has different business units, traditionally like marketing, HR, finance, etc. And these departments are just so large that they require a dedicated IT resource to just to manage them completely. So instead of giving somebody administrative privileges um, to many people uh, across the organization and across all users, you can create an administrative unit and assign one user as an administrator of a certain list of users within that unit and that could be within a department. So ultimately you're reducing your attack surface because if that one user's, that one administrator's account was compromised and their credentials were compromised, the attack surface is, is much smaller because they only have administrator rights over this certain scope of users. So when you're looking at this, it's always more so for a larger organization, but I do think it is something that's pretty cool that's still in preview right now. With this though, it's still only PowerShell commandlets that you can use to implement it. It's not within the UI. So they do have all the, the commandlets here and you're connecting to the Azure AD module, but it is something that you could implement in a larger, larger organization. Next one here is dynamic groups. Many of you may be familiar with dynamic groups already, um, but this is something within the 365 Azure AD center here. I've got it pulled up in the endpoint manager admin center, so you can go to groups there as well too. But on a high level, you're creating a group and you're, instead of being assigned, you're saying this is gonna be a dynamic user. And what we can do here is use queries to automatically assign somebody to a group based off of a certain attribute. And the list of attributes will be selected here and they're called properties. And you can go through the list and see ones that you may want to use. In a lot of cases though, some of the most common ones that I've seen is basic department. So when you say a department equals and you can put the value of you know marketing for instance. And if you've already created a group for marketing, then they will automatically be added when you create that user and define their department as marketing. So where this becomes really powerful is if you are using the full solution stack of Microsoft 365 Business, where you set up Azure AD single sign-on applications and scope them to certain groups within the organization. You've gotten certain access permissions to certain groups. You've scoped out policies to certain groups. 
And so whenever you're onboarding a new user and you add them to a certain d department here, uh, they are automatically granted access into these applications. They're automatically granted access into SharePoint sites, Teams channels, and they're automatically up and running. Additionally, you can set this up so that they automatically assign a license to them as well too. Usually when you're doing user creation, you're assigning the license at that time. So it's just one the more thing that you would not have to do. But I don't consider it a, a, that big of a deal just simply because you're usually doing it anyway. But this is where the power of dynamic groups comes in. So immediate access, you're probably reducing the amount of time for employee onboarding and offboarding because once you remove that user, they're automatically removed access from these applications as well too. And you don't have to worry about doing all these checks and balances. So next one here is device writeback. So device writeback allows you to keep track of devices registered solely with Azure AD um, in actually your local Active Directory. And this works in hybrid environments where you've already configured AD Connect to synchronize your local directory identities to the cloud. And Azure AD devices will push down into your local directory and will have a device object in the container called registered devices, which you see here. So this is great where you're trying to perform a hybrid environment, but you're really focusing on getting to a cloud-only approach for device management. And so you've had some Azure AD only devices in the cloud, but you want to maintain and keep them organized. So this is pushing them back down to the local directory. There's more things you can do from a conditional access standpoint and policy standpoint, uh, but that's the basic functionality that you get with that as well too. And you can configure that within the Azure AD Connect setup wizard. So the next one here is application proxy. With application proxy, you have the ability to secure remote access for on-premise applications. And this really comes into play where you wanna provide immediate transition path for cloud-first organizations to manage access to legacy on-premises applications that aren't yet capable of using modern protocols. So a user in this scenario, after they complete single sign-on to Azure AD, the user can access both cloud and on-premise applications if the application proxy has been set up. And this is through an external URL or an internal application portal and like myapps.microsoft.com. And so the application proxy replaces the need for a VPN or reverse proxy for these remote access use cases. And it's not exactly intended for users who are on the corporate network. It's more so for remote users trying to access these legacy applications in a secure manner. And this really is uh, growing in importance in light of recent events where we have a lot of remote workers now and they still need access to these legacy line of business applications and they need to be getting access to these legacy line of business applications in a secure manner. So this is a great solution for them. There's some additional more technical configuration, but if you can set this up, this is something that can be pretty powerful for them as well too. So the last one here that we have is third-party MFA partner integration. So in most cases, you're not always going to be using Microsoft's multi-factor. You're going to be using a third-party solution like Duo is a very common one. So Microsoft's given you the ability to integrate your third-party solution within its solution stack. So you want to take advantage of powerful solutions like conditional access, where you're setting certain controls being met to enforce uh, or certain conditions being met to enforce certain controls and one of those controls being enforcing multi-factor authentication. So you want to give your users that you're selling Duo for the ability to select Duo as that second factor to grant access to their applications. So you can actually set this up and I wanted to show you what this looks like. This is a conditional access policy and after you set up the custom controls which are documented by the third party like Duo has this fully documented and I can link that below but I also created a full video on actually setting this up. But you can see when you go into the grant section here, you'll have a new checkbox determined from the custom controls you set up where you can require Duo MFA to meet the control requirement. So this would give access to that user if they're using multi-factor or they're using the Duo MFA there. So you can deselect that and just require Duo MFA and just say that you require one of the selected controls but they will satisfy that requirement by using Duo. 
So to summarize here and kind of give next steps, um, some things to think about, definitely evaluate some of the new things that are going to be coming into the M365 business queue that you could implement and incorporate into the organization. Cloud app security and cloud app discovery are things that I consider to be very powerful, especially with a remote workforce, especially with third-party SaaS applications being onboarded at a rapid pace. You want to make sure you're locking down your organization and providing this zero trust network that everybody's referencing now as well too from the security landscape. And then lastly, if you're not selling M365 business and you're selling Office 365 business premium um, and you're looking for an upsell opportunity, definitely evaluate these solutions as another way to upsell them into a, a better secure posture as well and focus on that security aspect of it, not just the technical know-how of being more productive or anything like that. You really want to sell them on the security and compliance that is part of these solutions. So that's everything I had for you guys. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below.